In this video, I am going to show you how to trade options step by step. Be sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to give you a live walkthrough. First, I'll talk over the process with you and then we'll actually hop in Robinhood and take a look at how to actually buy and sell the option. And I'm not just going to walk through it with you. I'm going to actually go in and buy the contract and sell the contract so you see exactly what it looks like because it's important for you to know how to sell if you want to take profits or if you want to cut your losses. Be sure to watch the end so you know how to sell out too. But first, I would like to quickly take this time to remind you that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I purely make these videos in hopes of helping other people like you. So real fast, before we get into the video, if for some reason you're new here and haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content. And also while you're down there, be sure to smash the like button. It really helps to support the channel. And this introduction is beginning to feel a bit lengthy. So I'm just going to take my Instagram and leave it right here. Do with it as you will. And without further ado, let's get into the video. All right. So before we hop in Robinhood and purchase a contract, there are some terms we should be familiar with before doing so. And don't worry if you don't quite understand them right away. It'll make more sense when we get into Robinhood. But the first and one of the most crucial things to understand is the expiration date. The expiration date is the day that the contract expires and the day that the option is good till. And realize that at the end of the expiration date, if the contract's not in the money, the contract expires worthless, it goes to zero, it's not worth anything. Another critical thing to realize is the closer to expiration the contract gets, it loses the value of time and this time is referred to as theta. So getting more time on your options contracts gives you more time to be right, but also getting contracts with more time on them is going to cost you a lot more money. And we'll take a look at that later. And it's just this that makes options trading so difficult. Uh, this is where stocks and options differ. If you buy a stock, you can hold on to that stock forever as long as the company exists. Whereas if you buy an options contract, you can only hold on to it until the end of the expiration date. So when you buy an options contract, you run the risk of it expiring worthless. If it's about to expire and out of the money, you're going to be stuck with the contract and it's going to expire worthless. So a quick pro tip is when you see profit, take profit. The next thing to look at whenever it comes to buying an options contract is whether you're going to buy a call contract or a put contract. These are the basic contracts to understand and this is all we're going to get into in this video. But understand these two kinds of contracts and in the future if you want to get more complicated with it you'll be able to build different strategies using these. Those are as simple as it gets and whenever you hear anybody say anything about naked options they're referring to buying a call or buying a put. And one thing to understand is whenever you buy a call, you are buying a call because you believe the stock is going to go up. And when you buy a put, it is because you expect the price to go down. So combining the expiration call and put, buying a call for a certain date would be the same as saying, I believe this stock is going to go up by this date. Or buying a put for a certain expiration date would be the same as saying, I believe this stock is going to go down by this expiration date. And the next thing that's important to look at when it comes to buying an options contract is going to be what is referred to as the strike price. So going in there with whether it's a call or a put and the expiration date, you're going to need to pick a strike price. The strike price is basically the price in which you're betting on. So for instance, say you had a call with a $40 strike price, a call for a $40 strike price would be saying, I believe this stock is going above $40 by this day. And basically once the stock has gone above $40, the contract is considered to be in the money because it passed that $40 threshold. And when it comes to being in the money, when you're buying options, being in the money is a good thing. And going back to the strike price and the stock being at $40, any strike price below $40 when the stock is at $40 is considered to be in the money and anything above is considered to be out of the money. And that $40 strike price, if the stock is right at $40, is considered to be at the money. Anything at the money at expiration is going to be worthless. So you're going to want it to be in the money. The next thing to consider is your break even. The break even is the price that you need your contract to be at in order to break even on expiration. So for instance, for that same $40 call strike, in order for it to be at break even on expiration, let's say you paid $30 for that $40 call strike. You would need that stock to be at $40 and 30 cents in order for you to break even. If it's at $40 and 31 cents, you made a dollar profit on expiration and break even only applies 
to expiration at the end of the day. So for instance, if you buy the contract and you're at break even on the same day you buy it, you're likely up on that contract and it is okay, you can sell out and take profits right then and there. And, and I know all this can seem a little hard to process, so be sure to keep watching because shortly in this video, we're gonna hop in, take a live look in Robinhood. I'll be sure to point all of this out when we're looking in Robinhood. So the next thing that's important to understand when you're buying an options contract is that it's representative of 100 shares of the stock. So for instance, uh, going back to that $40 strike price and break even, and me saying you bought it for $30 and the stock is trading at $40 and 30 cents, 30 cents is not the same as $30. But if you have a hundred shares of the stock, 30 cents is the equivalent of $30 because 30 cents times a hundred is $30. So just know that options are representative of 100 shares, and that's the reason options pricing can fluctuate so dramatically. And when you first get started trading options, it's probably best practice to only start out buying one contract at a time. You're able to buy multiple contracts, and this will increase your multiplier. But when it comes to starting out and learning how to trade, start with just one contract and get used to the way they move because options pricing can move quite dramatically. An options contract that's in the money will typically move anywhere from around like 70 to like $95 for every dollar when the contract is in the money. Whereas when it's out the money, it could move anywhere from like $7 to $50 for every dollar that the stock price moves. And these numbers aren't exact. There are a lot of factors that goes into calculating options pricing. So there's no uh, one size fits all number, but just know with options, pricing moves a lot more dramatic. The next thing that's important for you to understand is that there is a bid price and there is an ask price. The stock market is an auction. In the same way that the stock market is an auction, the options market is an auction as well. So you will notice there is a bid price and an ask price and they're not always going to be the same price. The ask price is always going to be higher than the bid price. And just know that if you try to buy at that ask price, you're going to get your order filled right away. Whereas if you put in at the bid price, you may or may not get your order filled depending on uh, when the stock moves up or down. Another pro tip right here. If you want your orders filled right away, put them in at the ask price. If you think the value of the contract is going to come down to a better price, uh, put in a limit price for where you think it'll come down to and when it gets filled you'll get filled at that better price and then it can go back up so you may have just heard me mention the limit price the limit price is going to be the price you set in to buy the option this is going to be the highest price the option gets filled for one thing to know about the limit price if you put the limit price over what the ask price is your order is going to get filled for the number in the middle so for instance if the ask price is at 25 dollars and i don't know why you do this but if you put in your limit order at $50, it'll get filled for, uh, what's in between, uh, let's, let's say about $35, whatever's in the middle. The next thing that you're gonna wanna be aware of is the open interest. This tells you how many of those contracts are open, how many people were holding that contract uh, at the start of the day. This tells you how many people are interested in trading that contract. And typically the higher the open interest, the easier it's going to be for you to get in and out of the contract. So for instance, if you buy a contract and the open interest is like seven, just know there are hundreds of thousands of people trading options and trading in general. And if you only see seven people an open interest of seven, you're probably gonna have a hard time getting out of that contract and you're probably gonna get stuck with it until expiration. Make sure there's that open interest there. Make sure you're not stuck holding the bag. And now for the last term before we hop into Robinhood and take a look at what we're gonna buy, it's gonna be the summary. The summary is basically what it sounds like. It is a summary. It's the summary of what you're doing when you're about to purchase an options contract or sell an options contract. It's always a good idea to read the summary before you go through with the options contract. And now that we've gone over all that, let's hop into the handy dandy Robinhood and buy an options contract. So real quick, before we hop in Robinhood and take a look, I wanna make sure everyone can trade options. So if you already have the ability to trade options on your account, skip ahead to this time. And for those of you who don't, keep watching. All right, so here we are in the handy dandy Robin Hood and what we're gonna, and, and what we need to do first is we need to come over, you see the little person down at the bottom, we'll click over to investing, scroll down, 
and I believe it should be under stock lending if you scroll down. For me it says option setting, but for you it may say apply for options. And I just wanna let you know, yeah, this is where you will go to control all that. So option settings, uh, me, I am trading on level two and the reason I'm trading on level two, uh, if you wanna trade spreads and stuff like that, which is not anything we're gonna go in the video, yeah, you can go for higher levels, but level two is all you need to go over the stuff we're doing in this video. And another issue you may run into, if you chose to trade with a cash account like me, you're not gonna be able to trade any higher level than level two. If you have a margin account, you can trade higher level, which enables buying and selling spreads. But for me, whenever you have an account under $25,000, you're not gonna be able to make more than three day trades in a week. So because of that, I use a cash account. And just know that whenever you apply for options, it's gonna ask you questions about your risk tolerance and just know if your risk tolerance is low you are not going to be approved to trade options and now that everyone's all caught up uh, let's take a look at how to buy an option all right so here we are in the handy dandy robin hood in order for you to choose an option to trade on you got to first go to the company that you want to trade it on so i'm going to start out by going to pltr uh, the company is Planter. I'm going to click on it and here we are looking at the company. We should now all have the ability to click trade and trade options. We're currently in pre-market. Options don't trade during pre-market or post-market and the market opens in less than a minute. So now the market's open. Let's hop in and make a trade. All right, so we're going to hit trade, trade options. The first thing you see when you click in down here are some suggested strategies from Robinhood. It's probably a good idea to stay away from those. Personally found those to not be the best. So now the first thing that we're gonna do when it comes to us getting to an options contract is we're gonna pick an expiration date. And today's the seventh, uh, just, just for reference, today's the seventh. So we're gonna click on right here on December 8th and these contracts are expiring tomorrow. All right, so I want you to take a look at this $17 call, currently trading at 50 cents per share. Uh, 49 cents per share you'll see it's moving and then I want to hop over a week out to December 15th and look at that same $17 call is trading at 76% and if we go out even further $17 call is six dollars and seventy cents per share all right so that right there is just showing the value of added time to each contract I'm now going to back out back to December 8th and now let's take a look for more terminology that we went over. All right, so here on the top left, you can see there's a buy and there's sell. So if you had a contract to sell, you could come over here to sell and be selling a contract, but we don't have anything to sell right now. So we're gonna hit buy. And then right now we're currently on call, but if you wanted to go to put, you would just click on put up here. And, and now we're on put and you can see that the $17 put is worth a lot less than the $17 call. And that is because this put is actually out of the money, whereas the $17 call was in the money. Taking a look at it, you can see the share price is currently in the middle of the screen. It says $17.31. When it comes to a put, everything on this upside is gonna be in the money. And you can see all these strike prices to the left is as you go up, they're worth more. As you go down and come to the ones that are out of the money, they are worth less. And the ones that have probably no likelihood of actually occurring are worth one cent per share, which honestly, if you see that, you're probably not gonna be able to get out of the contract, which pretty much means they're worthless because they expire tomorrow. All right, coming back to that call, you can see again, uh, the opposite of the puts, the ones down beneath the share price are going to be in the money for calls and as we scroll down you can see all these strike prices get more expensive and coming back to that 17 dollars call you can see just beneath the strike price it shows a break even and the break even corresponds to the value of the contract so for instance right here you see the break even at 1753 1760 1762 you can, you can see the break even fluctuating the break even is going to be the price of the contract plus the strike price or if it's a put it's going to be the price minus the strike price 
and that is going to give you your break even. So now that we've looked at it for the sake of this video, we're going to go in and we're going to buy a call. I haven't done any research. I'm doing this simply for you guys. So you know how to buy and how to sell. Uh, I'm going to buy this 17.5 call and we're going to take a deeper look at some of the terminology we went over. So I'm going to click on this contract and then it's going to bring me here. So coming here, you can see on the screen that the current bid price at the top left is 23 cents per share and the ask is now 24 cents per share. It's, the value of this is actually going down. This may not be the best thing to buy right now, but we're still gonna buy it. Uh, some other things you can see, the high for the day for this contract was $30 and the low has been $20 today. Some other little fun things that will strengthen your options trading ability that we're not going to fully go over in this video are the Greeks down here. You can see the Delta, Gamma, Theta, the Vega, as well as Rho. The ones that are most important to me are going to be Theta, the Delta, and the Gamma. We talked about Theta and how that wears value off your contracts. We're not going to go too deep into that today. Just know those are there. And, and now that we've kind of gone over everything, we're gonna hit buy. We're, we're just gonna get one and I am doing this purely for you guys. So make sure to smash the like button because I am putting my own money on the line. I'm gonna buy one contract. You can see right here where it says limit price, there's a bid, there's an ask. They kind of have a limit price grayed out. And that's the price of the stock moves that'll move to. But if you have a specific price you want, you can actually click on that and type it in. Now coming to look at it, you can look down here where it says max cost. It shows it's 23 cents, but really it's a hundred shares. So it total comes out to $23. And then there's like a three cent fee per contract. Uh, it's really not much in the grand scheme of things. And then after you do that, you would hit review right here, down here. This is the order summary I was talking about. It says you're paying $23 for the right to buy 100 shares of PLTR for $17.50 per share by December 8th. PLTR shares aren't $17.50 or higher on December 8th. This option will expire worthless. Note, this does not include regulatory fees. So now if I want to go through with this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swipe up and as we sit here, you'll notice uh, it shows the number of contracts purchased is zero. And that's actually because I put in a limit order. The current bid is 24 and the ask is 25. So unless the ask comes down to 23, this order is not going to get filled. You see the bid is now 23. The ask is 25, it's 26. The price of the stock is moving. So uh, we haven't been filled, but if I wanted to leave the screen, I would just hit done and then we can come back and you see where it says upcoming activity you can see the order has been placed and if i wanted to cancel this and i really wanted to get in this trade i could click on this place order i can either cancel the order and i will cancel the order but i want to make sure i'm able to show you guys how to sell out so i'm actually going to hit replace order and i'm going to raise my limit price a little bit i'm gonna hit replace order about to have to spend all this extra money on this contract. Go back, make sure I do one contract and I'm going to do 0.27. I'm going to hit review. I'm doing this for you. Make sure to smash the like button and uh, yeah, I'm going to hit review. All right, we're going to swipe up. And as you can see, I got one contract filled. That was all I ordered and I got filled for $26 instead of $27 because the price must have come down while I was uh, putting that order in. So now I'm gonna click done and now let's go to the Palantir screen. All right, so here we are looking at Palantir and this is how you're able to check up on your contract. So looking in right here, you can see the one call I bought is currently sitting at $26, no profit, no loss. And if we click on it, this is just the contract, specifically the contract. <clears throat> Currently trading at $26, right at the price, minus three cents for the regulatory fees. 
and actually I am now down two dollars on it. I'm gonna try to wait around a little bit and see if I can at least make a dollar on this. But looking at things, you can see I have one contract. The current price is $24. The average cost is $26. The market value is $24. Today is the seventh and it expires tomorrow. So just know this probably isn't the best contract to mess with when you first start playing around with options. You probably want to get more time on them because the theta or the time decay really kicks in towards expiration and this expires tomorrow. All right, as you can see, I am down $4 on this contract and I'm doing this purely for you. It looks like I lost $5 to make this video for you. Please make sure you're showing love down there. So now I wanna close this. I'm gonna hit trade. I'm gonna hit sell. I'm going to hit one. And I am going to, if you have a price that you're hoping to sell it for, you can actually come in, put in that limit price. And I'm actually, I'm still gonna try to make money off this. I'm hoping I'll make money off this. I'm going to come in, I'm gonna put 27. And you can see right here, it says low fill likelihood. And it is possible that I don't get filled on this at all because it's not trading at that price. And if the price of the stock continues going down, I'm not gonna get out of this. So actually it's probably better for me for the sake of the fact that I'm about to get to editing this video for me to just sell it at the price it's being asked for or at the bid price. Whenever you're selling a contract, it's gonna go through fastest at the bid price. And whenever you're buying, it's gonna go through fastest at the ask price. Actually, I'm gonna come back, look at the chart and I'm going to show you when I decide to sell out. I might give this a few minutes cause you know, the market does not go up or down in a straight line. So stay tuned. All right, so I tried to wait a little bit. It came a little bit higher on going to try to sell right now. So I'm going to hit trade, I'm going to hit sell, I'm going to hit one. Let's try 24. And now we're going to swipe up and we got filled. We actually got filled for 25 and it, it takes three cents whenever you sell as well. So right here you can see the current bid and ask is 24 and 25. I lost a dollar in a trade. It's not as bad as losing four, but yeah, we lost a uh, limit. Limit price was 24. The bid and ask is currently 23, 24. You can see I have no contracts and going back, if we go to look at my portfolio, you can see I'm down a dollar and eight cents on the day and going to planter. You can actually see the history that I bought for $26 and sold for $25 today. One last very important thing before we close out this video that I want you to know is what we did today was a day trade. And if you have a margin account, you only get three day trades in a five day trading period if you have under $25,000 in your account. So I use a cash account to get around this. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, be sure to leave those down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, be sure to smash the like button. If for some reason you made this far and haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content. And last but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off and I want to change your life.